member from Bramley Gore Malton. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Speaker. So uh, I would love to add my voice to the debate. We're debating Bill 7, an act to enact the Burden Reduction Reporting Act 2014 and Partnerships for Job Growth Act 2014. So essentially this bill has two parts to it, two sections. Part one talks about reporting on regulatory burden reduction. So red tape reduction, burden reduction, regulation reduction. Part two talks about clusters. So I think it's just important just to understand what a cluster is in a, in a kind of simple term. Clusters are basically in a particular ge geographic area, in a particular region, there are similar businesses and they work together. There's a synergy between these businesses. So the bill has two components, talking about regulations, talking about in certain regions, certain areas where there's similar businesses that work together, how do you promote them? Okay, that's what the bill purports to do. The bill's got a okay name, it's you know somewhat factual to what it's actually gonna do. Here is the issue. There's not anything really that is overly opposable in this bill, but there's not really anything in this bill very supportable. The reason why I say this is everything in this bill, everything can be done already without a bill. There's nothing in this actual piece of legislation that you actually need legislation to be able to do. Let me clarify. The minister can currently report, the, any ministry can report on anything they want, anytime they want. So you don't need a bill to be able to report on anything. You want to report on the steps you're taking to help the environment. You can report, tell us, why not? Do you want to take some steps to improve the employment standards or employment regulations or streamline them? You can report that. There's nothing barring you from doing that. This bill talks about the steps you're going to take to report on steps you're going to take to reduce regulations. You could do that. I don't think you need a bill to do that. I'm actually very certain you don't need a bill to do that. In fact, uh, I'll give some of my suggestions in terms of the direction you should go, but let's just be very clear. There is absolutely nothing, and I've reviewed this quite thoroughly, there are no additional powers in this bill that you don't already have through Ministry of Regulation making authority. You already have, as a government, any government would have significant regulation making authority. So you're not increasing that. There's nothing really significant in this Schedule 1 or Schedule 2 for that matter, but let's focus on Schedule 1. So. Oh, before I actually continue too far, I'm sharing my time with the member from London West. Please make note of that. Thank you so much, kindly. Uh, so, there are certain regulations that we absolutely need. And so when we talk about streamlining the process for business to be successful, we absolutely support that. We support businesses doing well. We know that businesses have often a lot of difficulty navigating all the different rules and regulations that do apply to them. And that's something that we need to help businesses with. Uh, you know, I, I also ran my own law practice and I know that it's important to make sure that businesses are uh, able to move and navigate the different laws and different regulations that exist. Uh, we need to encourage business by making it easier for them to be able to set up and to develop and to flourish. But that being said, we absolutely need to be very vigilant around two areas where regulations are very, very crucial and important. When it comes to the environment, we need to make sure that we properly consult with experts in the field to make sure that our regulations around environmental standards are maintained and protected, and employment standards. We need to maintain appropriate employment standards to ensure that people in Ontario are protected, and in their workplace, they are uh, safe and they are secure. And so those are two areas where they're absolutely crucial to have regulations. We need to make sure that we're doing the right things in terms of the environment and we're doing the right things in terms of our people. So those are two areas that we certainly uh, want to see proper and enforced and thoughtful regulations. But in general, of course, if there's areas that are redundant, if there's areas that are non-essential, if there's areas that are putting an extra burden on businesses that aren't uh, improving the environment and aren't improving employment standards and why are they there in the first place, we absolutely support streamlining those. Now, with respect to the second schedule, it talks about clusters. Clusters is that, you know, simplified terminology for the geographically similar businesses concentrated in an area. Now, obviously, 
uh, when clusters are successful, that's a great thing for our economy. It's great for a particular region. Some of my colleagues spoke about their particular regions. It's great to have um, the automotive sector in southwestern Ontario and the fact that there's surrounding businesses that support each other, that work together, whether it's different parts and different manufacturers working with the automotive industry to build uh, an, a, a cluster base and it's a great source of employment. Uh, what is the government actually going to do though? So in the bill, the bill's quite interesting. It talks about the what kind of ideas should kind of be in, a, in the, the plan. It talks about the steps they're going to take to prepare a plan. It talks about if they don't want to go ahead with the plan, how to stop the plan. And it talks about reviewing the plan. But it doesn't actually have a plan. So it's all the steps around an actual plan. So we're not actually voting on a plan. They might say, to create a cluster, we need to invest in uranium. That's our plan to create clusters. There might be no connection with their plan and the actual cluster. They could say anything. The plan is not here. We're not voting on any plan. We're voting on what should be maybe in a plan. We're voting on how they can prepare that. We're voting on amendments, how you can change that plan, how it can be reviewed or how it can be stopped. But there isn't a plan here. There isn't a strategy here. There's a number of folks who have talked about particular strategies on developing clusters. A particular way that this is a specific way that government can actually encourage a cluster. This is a way, there, is way, there are ways. For example, there is uh, a number of factors that actually go into promoting uh, a particular sector. So if we take, for example, right now we see a lot of startup companies in the technology field. Uh, we actually had a, a recent event in Toronto, which was a phenomenal event. It was an open door or an open house startup. And they had uh, all the startups that are in Toronto basically open their doors to the public. We have phenomenal startups doing great work around uh, new in innovative bicycles. We had startups doing work around um, various web-based applications, coming up with new apps. We had, uh, we had all sorts of really amazing startups. And they're all kind of clustered together around uh, you know, certain parts of the city. And uh, we can talk about, uh, I'll give you some examples of what we can actually implement to help these out. So one thing that a clustered sort of types of businesses could benefit from is infrastructure. If we actually invested in good infrastructure to help these businesses move around, to help them move their services around, to help them physically get around, to help them move their products around, that would be a plan. So if it was a specific plan saying we need to invest in increasing you know, investments in infrastructure with a view to supporting certain clustered businesses or certain regions that have already existing businesses that need to move around quickly, we can, that's not in this plan though. It doesn't say we need to, we will implement, you know, an increase in funding for infrastructure in this particular region. It just vaguely talks about steps to come up with a plan and then to review this plan and then to discuss how to end this plan. <laughs> it's, it's, it's odd because, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing right with it either. You can just do this anyways. It just speaks to what, what I've brought up before. What are the priorities of this government? When we have a number of issues that are pressing, that are of great concern, why bring forward a bill that has so little in it that doesn't actually increase the powers of the, the government already? They don't provide new powers. You already can report. You could already take steps to improve businesses that are clustering. There's actually nothing innovative in this bill. There's nothing new in this bill. There's nothing that gives additional powers that don't already exist in this bill. There are other bills, though, that I think we need. For example, the anti-slap legislation. That was something crucial. That was something that would encourage democracy. That bill is not brought forth. Why is this government not prioritizing democracy? The fact that people need to voice their concerns, voice their dissent, and folks that do so are being hit with strategic lawsuits that discouraged their public participation. Why didn't that bill come forward? Instead of this bill, which again, sounds great, but doesn't actually provide anything of substance. Doesn't provide anything new. And uh, I know that uh, we're, we're close to the time, and so I, I'm happy to end my comments here and pick them up afterwards. Thank you so much.